Hey, let's look at some AI counting apps because the end is near, right? Oh, that's not going to happen. Oh, you poor you poor little guy. Right you should have been a doctor. Seven AI apps to make your accounting firm more productive. <music> Meeting recorders. This kicked off like late last year, early this year. You may have heard of Fathom. It is a free like note taker that you can have hop on your Zoom calls automatically and take auto like transcripts of these meetings. And we've all encountered these things in the wild. Like what is this robot listening in on my calls? Well, here's the thing in an accounting firm, these tools insanely helpful because how many times have you been the blocker to your team needing some information from a meeting or you're like, ah, I met with that guy like a year ago. Did he say that thing? I can't remember whether he did or not. It turns out there's a ton of context buried in these meetings that we have that we don't capture. And to have recordings of all of these meetings for them to be searchable for years into the future, man, that is a huge benefit to your firm. Now, it is still weird, it's still uncomfortable. I think we're gonna get to a point where it's more normalized to have these meeting recorders. I actually did a whole show on this on my daily podcast that I will link about how to normalize this with your clients. But check out some killer ways you can use this stuff. So this initial version we saw from Fathom, it would give you like summarized meeting notes and auto captions. Great, awesome, better than nothing. Save that transcript to your file system, you got it. But a couple other ways you can use this tech, check this one out. Firefly's AI does a lot of the same things, but check out this one thing that it does that I absolutely love. I'm here looking at my notebook. That is all of my meeting recordings. And Firefly's has this thing called Ask Fred. Who is Fred, you say? I don't know. But what it lets me do is chat with an AI assistant about the meeting. Now, in my opinion, meeting summaries Helpful, give me the bullet point outline, whatever, that's great, better than nothing. But where I find myself coming back to meeting transcripts is because I'm like, ooh, did they mention that very, very specific thing? And the summary may not show that, right? Because by definition, like, it's not going to show everything. But I can ask Fred, were his rental properties discussed? It doesn't appear that Jason discusses his rental properties. How about monitor arms? Did Logan get angry at any point during this meeting? And the number of times I would have killed for something like this as a staff accountant, for this to just populate automatically when my boss got off a call so that I could ask it the questions I need to ask it. And then for myself, where I've been like, oh, I met with Steve like a year ago. Did we talk about that? I can't quite remember. Man, we gotta normalize these things. They're so helpful for accountants. Now, I know, I know you're going, when are they just gonna build it into the meeting tool that I already use? Well, if you're a Zoomer, Zoom announced some more AI stuff the other day, but admittedly, when you read through it, it is pretty meh, like pretty like geared for enterprise, like not the way that I use Zoom. Also, Teams has their own like premium, they call it Teams Premium, that has some additional functionality. And it is like pretty cool. You've got like little AI notes and all that. And on the far right, you do have like a chat assistant that you can talk with. But my Teams does not look like this right now. I don't know if this is actually available yet or not. So if you use Teams, you may be able to get this built in pretty soon. Otherwise, like a bolt-on service like Fireflies, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you are in the United States, in America, we just got a new bill that passed, the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2023. Have you read the full text of the bill? Absolutely not. But you know what I'm using like a lot now is apps that will let you talk with PDFs. And there's a couple cool ones built directly into ChatGPT now I shall show you. So here's what I do. I come out to like where the full text of the bill lives. I get a PDF link to it, grab the URL of this PDF, and then I just pull that URL into a ChatGPT conversation. So if you are on ChatGPT Plus, that is the $20 a month paid one, in a new conversation, just go to GPT-4 and then plugins, and you can pick any one of a number of plugins that are free that you can pull in on a conversation. So I've had the best luck lately with Ask Your PDF. No sign up required. Literally all you do is copy paste the URL of the PDF into the conversation, then you can start chatting with it. So here's an example of what I did with this bill. I said, I'm a tax bro, take a look at this new bill. 
outline anything in the bill that may impact how I advise clients on, on their income tax obligations. It outlined five things, one of which was about funding for the IRS. So I immediately got mad. I said, tell me more about number four. And it broke down the details of like, what is in the bill? Now, this works great for big old PDFs of any kind. This could be the text of a bill. It could be like a humongous manual for like legacy software, something like that. There are a bunch of chat with PDF services right now. Why I like this one, why I'm still doing it in ChatGPT is this service uses GPT-4. Most of the free services you see online that are chatting with PDFs do not use GPT-4. And as a result, they hallucinate way more. So the reason I'm using this inside of my chat GPT plus is because right now it will use GPT-4. Okay, next up, can it be generative email? If you work in an accounting firm, you know that 50% of your job is just taking care of that dumpster fire that's in your e email inbox. And Canopy will now use AI to help you to generate emails. Pretty handy, here's how it works. In the little like email authoring screen, there's a little, little magic, magic wand you can click now with a number of different options. You can draft a new email from scratch, you can rephrase something, make your tone friendly, etc. For example, let's create a new email from scratch. Steve's being a real pill and not getting me the documents I requested. I need to more sternly stress the importance of providing the requested docs on a timely basis. There you go, bada boom, bada bing. A nice little courteous email for Steve. What if I'm just mad? Listen, Steve, this is the fourth time I'm asking you for my rah, rah, rah. I can select that and say rephrase. You can give me a way nicer, friendlier email. To the guy who's like, why am I gonna, why am I gonna spend all this time prompting when I could just write the email myself. Here's the thing with this ROI calculation right now when we work with language models. Even if it does not save you time, let's say it's a wash. You could have written it yourself or you could have written a great prompt to give you a usable email. Even if that ROI calculation is a wash right now, what you are learning by leaning into tools like this, like ChatGPT, is how to better work with language models because that's absolutely a learned skill. What person A can get out of it, totally different than what person B can get out of it if they spent a bunch of time with it. So as you're doing that ROI calculation, think about the fact that ultimately these models are getting better and better and it is a skill worth learning, a muscle worth exercising. What do we got next? Oh baby, this is a good one. Okay, digits. Digits are like some OG like AI machine learning nerds that have been building stuff for accountants for a while, here's kind of a run through of what they're doing right now. I am logged into a Digits demo account now. I'm gonna come down to quality check. Let's look at 2022. Bunch of things that it's doing here. We've got two items here under unexpected categories. And this is because in all the past instances of this transactions like this, you can see these here, they were categorized a different way. And so Digits is telling me, are you sure you actually want this from Want this in a website and software, or do you actually want it in meals? That's how you always categorize it in the past. To accept it, all you gotta do, click the little green check. That is unexpected categories. How about vendor cleanup? Same sort of thing. If you always coded a certain type of transaction to a specific vendor in the past, but this one looks different, it'll call those out for you. Now this screen, this is gonna identify a whole bunch of potential things that we get wrong. It's gonna ID transactions that are just missing vendors. If you put something in a top level like parent account, like in QuickBooks, you got the parent account and then the sub accounts, it'll highlight the parent account things. What else? If there's personally identifiable information in the memo of the transaction, like an account number, something like that, it'll call that out and be like, hey bub, you probably wanna remove this. And they're continuing to build on this stuff month over month. So you got like a single feed of AI suggested changes. One other cool thing I'll show you in the section called burn, like cash burn. Let's go back to 2023. Check this out. They got little like generative insights down here. So uh, did you know compared to April, expenses decreased 28% driven by decreases in payroll expenses. Just last week, we talked about delivering financial statements over video. Check that video out if you haven't. And the most common question I get are like, what are the kind of insights you would tell a client when you're delivering a set of financial statements? 
Honestly, it's stuff just like this. Like they're calling out really helpful things here. And these are all like built on their own like generative AI model that will give you these insights according to the underlying data. So if you run a report package out of here, it'll actually build this stuff into an executive summary. One other cool thing, they've got like an outrageous search function. So I'm gonna search for LinkedIn. I've got a receivable customer vendor, all these past transactions. I'm gonna look at the vendor. This is a dedicated page for the vendor. And I can see this spiked back in November. They even have insights sites at the vendor level. Did you know spend with LinkedIn trended down over the last 12 months, but in November it jumped up by 82%. This is one of those things where it's like, there's so many AI things happening that it's like not really an AI feature as much as just AI is just going to kind of underpin all of the tech that we use in the very near future. Speaking of the future, where are we headed with all this stuff? A lot of spooky new AI stuff, a lot of like misinformation, AI for marketing, like how do I cut through all of that stuff without giving away my client's lucky charms? Buddy, can you see where this is headed yet? The music, do it. It's Tech Guru. It's the IT firm that just works with accounting firms because you're different, you're a snowflake, you have a special set of needs that any old run of the mill IT group could not possibly understand, right? You got your busy seasons, you got your slow seasons, and you want an IT partner that understands the cyclicality of your business, but two, also understands that the tools that you use are absolute shit because you have to do work with the government. So when you pull up a stinker like UltraTax or something like that, they're gonna be like, Oh, this old, this old pile of the real show black Rather than your regular old IT vendor that's like, what is this thing? And you're now gonna pay them a week to learn this tool that stinks. Been there, bought the t-shirt. You want one? Anyways, tech guru, IT just for accounting firms. Their sweet spots like five employees and up. Don't make up the answers yourself. Don't listen to YouTube think boys. Get a trusted partner that can help you run through all this stuff responsibly. Okay, learn more about Tech Guru in the video description. Okay, this was a biggie. Carbon AI. Carbon is a practice management system for accounting firms that helps you manage all your work, manage your email, all that stuff. They just launched a bunch of cool AI goodies. How about this? Summarized email and comments. Okay, if you go to a view of like a client and you've got this timeline of what are all the things that we've done with a client. Normally if there's an email there, you would have to drill into it and read it to see what's going on, right? Not so fast, buddy. Thanks artificial intelligence. Now it's gonna put a summary of that like in this kind of timeline so you don't have to drill into the email. Compose an email from a task. Okay, ooh, this is a good one. Prioritize your inbox. So. You got a whole bunch of spicy things coming in that inbox, right? Well, based on the content in that email, the sentiment, the tone of what they sent you, it's gonna automatically flag things that it may think are high importance and low importance. You don't have to do that yourself. Your little AI overlords are gonna do that for you. Got some other tools for composing email, adjusting your tone, but this is a biggie too. Compose replies. That is using like the previous email thread to inform what a proper reply to that email ought to be, like in context, in the thread. How cool is that? And if you're already clutching your pearls because this means oh, I'm sending my client information to an AI model. Interestingly, they're using Azure's, Microsoft Azure's OpenAI service to ensure that this information is not retained in the model. It's, it's like a different, more secure pathway to getting this stuff done. And that is exciting. Good job, Carbon. Back slaps all around. Okay, two more. And these are examples of AI agents. AI agents. If you listen to my daily podcast, you know what that is. You know just how exciting that is. Now, agents are things that are actually gonna like go out and do the work for you. So if you think about your task management system where you assign things, to human users. Think of an agent as like something you can assign a task to and it will just go out and do it or even do it on a recurring basis for you. This is like the ultimate, like most exciting long-term AI application are agents that just go out and do stuff. Now, one such example, like very early days basic example, something that Keeper implemented here. So common problem, you get to a transaction, you can't tell what it is, you don't know what the merchant is. You can ask Keeper AI. Keeper, by the way, month end close tool for like managing the accounting closes of all of your small business clients. So the bank detail here is intercom.io. 
maybe you don't know what that is. What you're seeing here is the internal dialogue of the AI going out and trying to figure out what that is. Based on historical data provided, previous transactions with Intercom have been classified under dues and subs. Additionally, the transaction description includes .io, which suggests it is related to, so to Intercom's software service. Thought, I have the vendor and category information, but I should double check with the Google search to see if there's any additional information. Final result, vendor, Intercom, category, dues and subs. That little guy, that little robot, he just went out and did that research for you like that. Thank you very much. Something that you otherwise have to like go out and do some Googling on or search the ledger history to see where did we categorize this one last time. That is exciting, but I got one more agent for you. This is Pixie Copilot, and I'm giving them half credit here because they are marketing this thing, but they haven't released it yet, but it is just a little, a little appetite wetter to get you excited for what's coming. So Pixie, another practice management system, helps you run your accounting practice in a more organized way. Check this out, email received, John from Candy Flowers needs help with a bank loan application. I think this is the right answer. That is your AI co-pilot saying that. So you got an email and it's like, how can I help? So it goes out to the Zero API, it pulls the profit for the company, it pulls the sales for the company, it pulls supporting it PDFs for those two numbers, and then, buddy, buckle up, it auto-generates an email to respond. Hi, John, regarding your information requests, these are the figures requested. I've attached a, com a couple of reports for the company. Let me know if you need anything else. So it generated that whole helpful reply to the email, not just like a helpful text reply, but went out to the source and grabbed the data that you actually need to provide. How cool is that? Soup's cool, but only half credit because they haven't shipped it yet. Hey, seven cool AI examples, how this stuff's making your life a little easier. I'll be totally honest, changing really fast. We talk about this stuff almost every day on my podcast. I did a whole episode on AI agents, highly recommend. Put it right up here. And then another one last Friday about how I think we're actually really close to quote unquote fully automated bookkeeping. I know, you're triggered. It's a super triggering phrase, but stuff's changing. We went deep on it right up here. Check it out if you haven't yet. Oh, wow. I didn't know about yes. this daily podcast. I guess I Let me click on this. This now. looks interesting. This is relevant to my interests. 